Hello. Uh, today I'm going to give you a little insight into some of the things that we've been working on in the uh, Workers Experiences Frameworks team. This is a small uh, focus team uh, inside Cloudflare that's looking at how we can help people build great front ends on top of workers, making use of uh, well-known web frameworks, but also the technology that Cloudflare offers and the special things that you can do with those. So one of the things that we've been looking at uh, last autumn in the run-up to Christmas was um, this idea of micro front ends. And we've built some demonstrations of how you can do this, making use of workers with a thing that we call a uh, fragment architecture. So let me just step in and give you some background. So first of all, what are micro front ends? And why do we care about them? So over the last few years, front end uh, web applications have tended to grow larger and larger. We're relying upon them more and more for our business needs. And these have grown into very large monolithic applications. These monolithic applications are usually huge blocks of JavaScript that need to be downloaded to the browser. And they can cause a number of problems which are quite difficult to solve. They're often slow to start because it takes a long time for the JavaScript to be downloaded to the browser. Then the browser has to parse the JavaScript and execute it. And this can actually block the browser. So it means that the user is having to wait before it can actually make use of the application. When you have very large code bases that have to be deployed in one go, this can make it quite difficult for teams because they would like to be able to deploy individual pieces. And also, they would want to evolve pieces of the application independent of others. And sometimes these um, constraints lead to teams uh, struggling to actually move forward at a reasonable speed and implement the kind of um, features that they would like to. So micro front ends uh, could possibly be a, a solution to this. Uh, micro front ends come from uh, an idea that's been around for a long time in the back end, which is microservices. And the idea is to split up your application into smaller pieces that are decoupled from each other. The benefit of this is that each piece of code can be executed separately. Uh, they can be deployed independently. And therefore, the teams that build them are less coupled to each other. Um, a classic example is that if a team rolls out a new version which breaks some piece of the overall application, they can quickly roll back that one small piece. And it doesn't affect the other teams that have been rolling out their own changes in the background. So now, while micro front ends are not entirely new, they generally require users to build applications where the micro front ends are loaded in the browser after the application has booted. We were interested in seeing if we could actually move the idea of micro front ends onto the server and render them on the server side, and then also render each micro front end in its own Cloudflare worker, which would mean that they can each be deployed separately. And also, you get the benefits of the Cloudflare um, platform being able to scale horizontally very well. By server side rendering the code, we can get a much better time to first interaction um, for our website, which improves our core web vitals, which will improve things like search engine optimization scores, which in turn can result in uh, higher uh, revenues from people staying on your site and being more likely to purchase goods or use your services and so on. Um, by deploying each of these um, micro front ends, to its own worker, uh, we can actually separate out the deployment model so that each worker can be deployed independently and um, they are not tied to each other tightly. So teams can work independently. And finally, one of the nice things about Cloudflare workers is that we can actually bind workers together using a thing called a service binding. 
And this is a much faster way of connecting two services um, within the Cloudflare network without uh, incurring the full cost of an HTTP request, which you would have to do if you built them as separate web servers in a normal traditional network. So what might this look like? So here you can see an architecture of um, an application and each of these circles with a worker symbol in is an, a Cloudflare worker. And what you can see is that we have a worker that's responsible for generating the header part of the page, and then another worker that's responsible for the body. And interestingly, the body is actually made up of two further workers or fragments. There's one which is a filter and one which is a gallery. And then finally, there's another worker which is responsible for generating the footer. Now, each of these is its own separate independent server-side rendered application. And they get stitched together inside the workers. And finally, in this main worker, we stitch all of them together and we stream the response back down to the browser. Let me show you what that looks like in practice. So here is the same application again, actually running in the browser. It's called Cloud Gallery. The idea is that um, you can filter the gallery of clouds by their names. So if I type in gray, you can see that you only end up with the gray clouds. If I type in dark, you get the dark clouds. Simple application. But what's really interesting is that each of these boxes that have got the dotted lines around are those separate server-side rendered micro front, front ends. What's interesting is that each of these is its own application all on its own. So for instance, if I click on the footer link here, it takes me to a page which only contains the footer. And this footer is executing as its own application. It's independent of the others. But more interestingly, if I click on the body and open up that application, you can see the header and the footer have gone. But the filter, which is this fragment here, and the body are still in place. And they still work. So if I put in brooding, you can see that the interaction between the filter and the main body uh, gallery still works, even though these are not part of the main application anymore. They're running on their own. To make it even more clear what's going on, we've added this artificial delay, which we can set. And what this means is uh, when the gallery is displaying the images, it will actually, the worker will incrementally return the images more slowly than it needed to. So we can actually see them loading. So if I remove this and hit enter, you can see that it's going to only produce one image every two seconds. Now, what's notable is that if I refresh this and start typing in here, you can see that the filter component or micro front end is completely usable, even though the whole page is not finished loading. And this is possible because each micro front end is its own application. And therefore, each application can be interacting with the user while the other applications are still loading. So they're not tied to waiting for the whole thing to load in one go. And again, this gives a much better experience for the user because even if the main body is slow, you could imagine it was bringing in comments or some other information slowly, we can still start interacting with the application and having a good experience. So let's just go back now. You can see hopefully that this has some potentially interesting applications um, to break up your application into smaller pieces, which can all be used independently of each other and provide a much better uh, experience for the user, but also a more powerful 
deployment and um, maintenance model for your developers. So the trouble with um, defining a new architecture like this is that potentially uh, you might need to rebuild everything in order to work with this new model. And that's usually not possible, especially with a very large application, like the kind of monoliths that we're concerned about. If you try and rewrite your whole application in one go, it can be very expensive. It can cost lots of time. It can be very uh, risky. And um, it means that you're probably unable to continue to advance the features of your application while you're doing this rewrite. So generally, it's better to try some kind of incremental approach. So on top of the current fragment architecture that I just showed, we've also come up with a way of incrementally adopting this strategy or this architecture. So the idea is that what you do is you look at your application and find the pieces of the application that you think would benefit from being converted to micro front ends, the ones that would add the most value, for instance, on your home page, there might be some piece of the application which you would really like the user to be able to see quickly and start interacting with while the rest of the application is booting. And then you integrate this new micro front end into the legacy application in a way which requires as little change to the legacy application as possible. The nice thing about this is that it increases um, the benefit to the user but with only a very small initial investment on our behalf as developers. So here's a slightly different architecture diagram of a different um, application that I'm going to demonstrate in a second. The main things to notice here are at the top, we have a legacy application. This is our old monolithic application. In this case, it's built with React and it's going to be client-side rendered, and you can imagine that it might take a long time for it to boot up, and so the user is having to wait for a long time for it to start. What we can do is we can choose to have certain pieces of the application and convert those to micro front ends. And what's really cool about this is that each micro front end could actually be built with a completely new technology. So this could also be used as an option to start migrating to a new web framework if you want it, but also you can continue to use the same framework, but just get the benefit of server-side rendered micro front ends. The key piece here is the piercing gateway worker. Now what this does is it checks the, re the request that's coming in. It starts to download the original legacy application but in the, in the parallel, it will also choose which of the micro front ends is needed and download that at the same time. What happens on the browser is that the um, micro front end will appear rendered very, very quickly because it's server side rendered and it can appear on the screen very quickly. You can then start interacting with that and getting the benefit of the user experience while the legacy application is booting in the background. When the legacy application finally boots, in our helper code, we then move the micro front end into the correct place in the legacy application so that it features as though it were part of the original application. Let me show you how this might work in practice. So here we have a, a very artificial application called the Productivity Suite. The first page that you see is a login. Um, we're not actually going to worry about authenticating properly. Uh, all it's going to be interested in is me giving some kind of name, which will then allow me to log in. If I just disable the piercing for a moment, and you can see up here, we can add an artificial delay to how long the legacy app takes to boot. So let's assume it's going to take three seconds. If I refresh the page, what you'll see is that we see nothing for three whole seconds while the legacy app is booting which is not great for the user. And imagine if it was more than three seconds, it would be really frustrating for the user to have to sit and wait for that time. Now let's see what happens when I enable piercing. What this means is that this login fragment here will actually be rendered straight away and will be interactive. 
while this background legacy productivity suite app is booting. Let me refresh again with, leg with piercing enabled. You can see that already the login frame fragment is visible and the productivity suite was booting in the background. Already the user gets a much better experience. But what's actually really interesting is that the interactions here are already, um, that this fragment is already interactive even while the background application is booting. So if I make the background very slow and refresh again, you can see I can start entering things here and that the password was um, updating interactively already. If I do it one more time, I can put in my name, DDD. I can hit login. Now the login has already started, but of course the main application had not finished booting. So we had to wait for the application to boot before the login could complete. That was the login component being a micro front end. Um, here we can see now we're logged in. We have a number of different tabs, to-do list, news, calendar, contacts. These first three have all been implemented as micro front ends. Um, this one, to-do lists, is a combination of two micro front end fragments, the list picker fragment and the to-dos fragment. What you'll remember from the architecture diagram was that the, the list was actually written in Quick, and the to-dos is written in React. So going back over here, you can see this is a quick application. This is a to-dos application, uh, a React application. As I add a new list, you can see that uh, the to-dos changes, and I can add more to-dos here. I go back to this one. You can see that it updates. So these two micro front ends are interacting within the context of the bigger application. If I reboot this page, I'm logged in, so it's going to take me straight to the to-dos. But what you'll see is the background app is still um, booting, but the foreground fragments are interacting and interactive, so they can work with the user, but they can also interact with each other, even though the main legacy app has not been booted yet. Finally, I'll just show the news page, and this is yet another web framework called Solid, which is used to build this section inside here. And you can see that we've managed to create a, an application that is composed of multiple micro front ends, each of which can be deployed independently of the others. And they can be embedded into a legacy application without making very much change to the legacy application at all. All of this code is available on GitHub, and I can share the links later. And in those repositories where this code is stored, you can find these applications plus the glue code that we built to help connect these things together, do the piercing and the fragments and so on. I hope that this has been useful to you and that you might find that there are some aspects of what we've been looking into here that would benefit your own applications. Um, we'd be really interested to work with you and to talk with you about the ways that this might be useful to you and the ways that we could move this forward to make it more, more accessible and helpful to everyone.